Hi, I'm Kimberly Long, Asia Editor of The Banker, and I'm here today with Perry Wajio, the Central Bank Governor of Indonesia. Thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, so, first of all, I wanted to ask you a question around interest rates in Indonesia. And there has been talk around lowering the rates. Um, and I just wanted to ask the reason behind this and also when you think this may be happening. Over the past uh, two uh, board meetings, we already discussed uh, this. Uh, when you look at our domestic objective, our inflation is very low. We have a target 3.5% plus minus this year, but uh, our uh, latest forecast, our inflation end of this year will be lower than 3.5%. So there is a room for more accommodative monetary policy from that uh, you know, uh, reason. Uh, uh, the other reason is, of course, we need to support our economic growth. We expecting our growth to be between 5 to 5.4 percent this year. Uh, and then the mid, uh, you know, uh, forecast is 5.2 percent. Of course, we uh, we need also to support our uh, effort together with the government on uh, increasing economic uh, growth. Those two reasons, I think, for Indonesia, there is a room for more accommodative monetary uh, policy. Uh, we already uh, started uh, uh, our uh, uh, policy to be supporting on economic growth since last year on other aspect, not on the monetary uh, policy, relaxation of uh, macro budget, injection of the liquidity to the uh, to the banking. That's supporting also bank lending to the economy. Uh, the issue, of course, your question is uh, uh, monetary policy. When the timing? of a more accommodative monetary policy. Actually, uh, Kimberly, uh, last board meeting, we already started to be more accommodative monetary policy, which is on the further uh, injection of liquidity through the reduction of reserve requirement. We already lower our reserve requirement by 50 basis point, injecting uh, once for all, you know, additional liquidity about 25 IDR trillion, which is creating the potential, you know, liquidity about close to 100 uh, uh, IDR trillion. Mm -hmm. The question is on the future cut of interest rate policy uh, in the you know, uh, in the coming months or, you know, uh, period. Uh, we need to ensure two things. First, of course, looking at the global financial condition. I think Indonesia is continuing to be attractive in attracting uh, uh, capital inflows, including portfolio uh, inflows. We want to ensure uh, that continuing uh, uh, portfolio uh, inflows. Uh, uh, year to date, we already received about uh, 9 billion US dollar portfolio uh, inflows, about 5 billion to government bond, uh, about 4 billion to equity. We need to uh, ensure continuing attractiveness of our uh, domestic financial uh, asset. Uh, that uh, uh, the reason on uh, we have to look into what global financial uh, condition. The other second uh, factor is of course ensuring the balance of payment continue to be in balance or uh, surplus, mm -hmm. we need to, uh, you know, uh, 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 re uh, reduce minutes our current account deficit. We expecting our current account deficit this year will be down from above three percent last year. This year will be about two point five to three percent of GDP. Mm -hmm. But financing of those current account deficit through continuing capital inflows, especially portfolio inflows, is important. These two factors that we are we are continue will be assessing from month to month. Uh, going ahead to determine the magnitude and the timing of the policy uh, interest rate cuts. Okay, thank you. Um, secondly, I wanted to ask that um, S&P have recently increased the rating to triple B, which yeah. brings it in line with the other ratings agencies, and they've also been very um, positive about the, the economic growth and also the policy. Um, so what benefits will this bring for Indonesia as a whole? 
Of course, uh, we are we are we are we are uh, quite uh, you know uh, happy mm-hmm. for this uh, upgrading mm-hmm. uh, two notes uh, of the rating from the uh, SNB mm-hmm. a bit uh, overdue, but is this is this, this, this good? Mm-hmm. This is a, a testimony of foot of confidence of at least uh, three things. First, uh, continuing positive economic prospect of Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Uh, second is on the external stability are maintained. Mm-hmm. And the third is sound policy response, not only from the central bank, but also from the fiscal and structural reform from uh, the government. The, the benefit is already being seen. Mm-hmm. Our uh, CTS credit default swap, you know, uh, already uh, you know uh, down significantly from about 130 basis point. Mm-hmm. Now it's about 102 basis point, mm-hmm. which is redu- uh, reducing significantly on the risk premium mm-hmm. for foreign investor to invest in Indonesia. That's why our interest rate, you know, parity, interest rate differential, whether you're talking about uh, you know cover or uncover, has been you know, becoming more attractive. This is also the the the, 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 the one of the factor why we receiving continuous inflow on the portfolio inflows. And that's why for those investor, I think we thanks for continuing, you know, uh, confident mm-hmm. and support for Indonesia and we expect to be more to be coming for portfolio inflows in Indonesia as well as other aspect of uh, inflows. Mm-hmm. So- Also, Indonesia is really trying to improve its um, payments technology and as part of the Vision 2025 um, trajectory. Um, There's also, there have already been introductions of standards around QR codes, for example. So what are the aims of this and what do you also want to see introduced as part of the 2025 Vision? Well, thank you, Kimberly, for asking this. Uh, As you know, we already launching last May Mm -hmm. on our new vision of Indonesian Payment System 2025. Mm-hmm. The ultimate uh, objective and how we from the central bank through the payment system can be able to support the fast growing and acceleration of digital economy and finance in Indonesia. As you know, Indonesia is you know, uh, very prospective and uh, uh, digital economy and finance for catering the need of uh, you know, uh, economic growth mm-hmm. Uh, including also the SME development, financial inclusion. The ultimate objective, how we can use this uh, you know, new vision, payment system mm-hmm. 25, uh, 2025 to support those uh, uh, development. How we, we, we have to do this? First, uh, our payment system will be directed toward integrating the eco- e-commerce, the fintech, and the banking through the whole process and to end process of money supply, money circulation uh, to support fi- uh, monetary stability as well as financial stability. Second, our payment system uh, vision will supporting acceleration of digital banking in Indonesia through open API, mm-hmm. uh, you know, application programming mm-hmm. I- interface and uh, 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 development of new platform, which is uh, digitalization of the banking will be flourishing. I already talked with uh, you know uh, uh, about 15 uh, larger banks which is already progressing well in uh, moving forward uh, digitalization of the banking through uh, open API and so on. That, that how our payment system will you know interlink between digital banking, open banking with the development of fintech. The interlink between uh, open banking and uh, fintech will be uh, good, uh, not only uh, avoiding shadow banking, but also supporting once again digital economy mm-hmm. and finance. Now we already uh, discussing and then uh, more and more interlink between open banking mm-hmm. and uh, fintech. Our new approach of the fintech is more development approach rather than regulatory approach. We will encourage uh, new, uh, you know, uh, invention, innovation, and the f- uh, fintech in the way that in the link with open banking to support digital economy and, and finance. Uh, and 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 for how we need to balance between fast growing innovation and the need for customer protection, uh, more competitive, you know, nature of industry, as well as, you know, uh, cyber security, uh, you know, stability, and, 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 and so on. And last but not least, of course, we need to also ensure that 
you know domestic transaction will be uh, done through domestic and cross border will be also uh, be uh, gathered to open uh, new venture in Indonesia through whether FDI whether contractor or some uh, business uh, relation one of the example is our uh, new you know just launch as you as QR Indonesian version mm-hmm. what we are QRIS the QRIS is already being developed First, is you know in line mm-hmm. with the global movement using EMV standard, but at the same time, already able to difference you know domestic transaction and cross version. Mm-hmm. Uh, by uh, by by those uh, development, uh, we uh, our QRIS catering the need for domestic digital economy and finance, but also you know cross border uh, uh, entering. Mm-hmm. We also in the process of revamping our retail payment system infrastructure. Our clearing system now from the retail will be uh, you know uh, moving toward what we call it uh, Bank Indonesia fast payment mm-hmm. 24/7 mm-hmm. Uh, you know will be real time that will be supporting not only the development of open banking but also the fintech and the whole uh, transaction of the e-commerce and fintech we also uh, you know and do cost also looking into our uh, you know wholesale uh, payment system our new version of uh, RTGS as well as other aspects so Kimberly I think our new vision of payment system 2025 20, the whole process developing our ecosystem to support digital economy and finance, whether developing uh, instrument, uh, better fast uh, me- uh, uh, pro- uh, mechanism of process, uh, institution, infrastructure, as well as clear direction of the cross-border uh, transaction.